What is shaking? Welcome back to the Let's Go Win podcast, where we are here to help you be happy, healthy, wealthy, and get better every single day. We're continuing on with our podcast dentistry series, and we are going to be focused on orthodontics today. And we have a really cool guest. He is changing the way that orthodontists and orthodontics is happening. Dr. Elon Abramovitz is the founder of Perfect Fit Ortho and has been an orthodontist for 20 years. He's been blessed to have mentors that have led him to divergent strategies, creative thinking, and efficiency standards. I'm excited to welcome to the show somebody that is obviously changing the way orthodontistry, orthodontistry, orthodontist, the world of orthodontics. There you go. <laughs> the world of orthodontics is going, man. Welcome to the show, Elon. How you doing? I'm doing great, JM. Thank you for uh, hosting me. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. It's truly my pleasure. One of the questions I love to ask people that get into your world, whether it's dentistry or orthodontics, is that, am I saying? Orthodontics. There you go. You got it. Thank you. When did you know, like, man, this is my path. This is where I want to go. And I guess why, why, why did you know this was going to be your passion and, and your purpose? Oh, that's a great story. Okay. So it happened for me. It came together in college. Um, my story is I've always noticed I'm great at giving. I'm great at designing things and engineering, and I loved medicine. So in college, I said, what should I do? Should I go into medicine? Should I do surgery? Cause I love that. Should I, should I do something chiropractic work? And then I said, you know what? There's an opening at the school of orthodontics in residency there, and I'm going to volunteer. So I got to volunteer there twice a week. And it included everything I loved. It included some art, some creativity, some medicine, some engineering. And I said, this is the career path for me. And obviously you've taken that to the next level where you're like, not only am I going to do this cool thing for 20 some odd years, but I'm going to actually revolutionize and change the whole damn game. I'm going to make it better. That seems to be kind of the path that you're on, man, which is pretty exciting. Well, I love that, that better. I, I call it a shift. You know, it's like I told you, I, I've been a giver and I've been a tinkerer. I like to take things that they are and I like to say, I don't want to be average. You know, I want to do something better than average. So let's see what we can do as this technology changes. And a lot of your guests talk about shifting from, you know, the analog era to the data digital era. And I totally agree with that. Um, so how can I do that? How can I also take into account what's happening with the clear aligner economy where there's other companies just bringing out aligners directly to the patients or going to the doctors. And I'm looking at it saying, this is not the way the smiles should look. We can do better. So I tinkered with a bunch of things and I said, I got it. And then once I solved the solution and created something where we can create amazing orthodontics through the dental office, virtually i said we got to go with this and and it's diverged and, and here we are today with you know it's been about a year and it's it's just growing exponentially it's just absolutely amazing yeah let's talk about that uh specific to making it different differentiating making the smile better you clearly said this is okay it's it's working but man could we do a better job what really does distinguish perfect fit ortho from some of the other liner companies, you know, again, my naivety is I don't know this world, okay. but I do know this. A hell of a lot of kids seem to be getting braces and both of mine certainly have. In fact, my youngest still has braces on. My wife did do Invisalign. I'm the only one in the family that hasn't done it. And I probably should, I guess, at some point. But anyway, my question is, what really makes it different from some of the others that are out there? All right. So the first things first is my mentors in braces taught me a different pathway and they taught me, a, a, I call it a more aesthetic and more functional way to treat the case. And with that came more aesthetic and more, um, you know, I would say more cosmetic results. Okay. It was just, you could see the difference. Um, I like to joke around with my patients and say, I'm not here to F your smile. What does F stand for? Not, you know, the F word, but flatten. I don't want to flatten your smile. I want to keep it as aesthetically pleasing as I can. And the boring sentences, you know, we want the upper lip to follow the upper gum line. And we want the edges of your top teeth to follow the curve of that lower lip while you smile. And that's not what we were doing orthodontically. 
And so my mentors taught me how to do it with braces. And I was able to take that into the aligners. Now, the interesting thing was I've worked with so many different aligner companies. They all seem to have their account set up the same way, same analog. And it just does the same thing braces did. It created what I call flat smiles. And so my mission became, how can I make it better? How can I create those wow smiles and just make it more than just straight teeth? And so that's what I decided to create. It's my passion. Let's make beautiful wow smiles for whoever has these aligner accounts. And so instead of saying, I'm going to just, you know, do this to make money in straight teeth. I'm like, no, I'm going to be the one that goes and works with every company, like an open-ended company. And I'm going to help any aligner create beautiful smiles. And I'm going to do that because I'm going to take over that tough part where a doctor submits that case and has to understand what they're looking at when they get it back. It's so much more than straight teeth. And it's been 20 years in the making. Can't take a weekend course to do it. It took me 20 years. And I'd like to give that back to everybody else. That's amazing, brother. Uh, so you're tinkering with this for 20 some odd years, perfecting it. At what point did you know, man, I got it. We finally figured this out. I mean, that's a long time to be. a long time. Yeah, brother. I mean, how many iterations did you go through before you said, yes, I think I, I actually I don't think I know this is so good. We're taking it to market. So it started really started with uh, um, Smile Direct. So Smile Direct, while my fellow orthodontists were going berserk about it, filing lawsuits and complaining, I said, I got to see what they discovered. Right? You don't go from nothing to this without a, an orthodontist physically present, without something that people wanted. So I became a patient and I went through the whole process and I learned what made them different than pretty much most orthodontist offices. So that was the first stage and said, hmm, something definitely is brewing here. The next thing was COVID. So right before COVID, I started reading a lot of books. And one book I read had to do with the shift into AI and how it was collecting all this data and how it was going to take over and transform so many professions. And then COVID hits. And I see what happened in our office. We couldn't bring patients in for two months. Yet the Invisalign patients, they were going along treatment just fine. And that's when it all came together. And I said, now it's the time to see what I can do to give back everything I've learned and just make it easy and smooth for the, uh, the key holders, the general dentists, which are the primary care doctors in our profession. And so I started testing it. And sure enough, we worked out some more kinks. You know, communication is paramount. And then I said, now it's time to launch it. I think we got it. We figured it out and we launched it. And so far it's been absolutely amazing. I'm curious on the response you received, because again, I'm thinking I, you and I have talked off air and I know abundance is something you believe in. That's oh, yeah. why collaboration and all these things work with you, which makes sense in the same breath. We also have these, you know, people suing immediately like smile direct. I'm going to throw a lawsuit out there. How have you been received so far? Because again, you're, you're bringing something that's upgrading yep. uh, what these other folks have done. Have you been met with some resistance, fanfare? What does it look like? I think there's both. I think there's both. I, I don't know. There's that old 80-20 principle that's out there. And there's also something I learned about our mindsets. You know, the majority of us, and I think COVID proved it, you know, we have this, this scarcity mindset and we have the sufficiency mindset. And so with those that have that sufficiency mindset, it's been amazing and it's been abundant. But for the others with the scarcity mindset, you know, it's, 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 been, it's been challenging, but rather than form an argument or get into it, I just listen, take the feedback and prepare to go out into my next meeting or my next presentation, kind of understand where they're coming from. Um, I also try to pick their targets. You know, we all have our target of our wants and I try to go to those by incorporating what they want while then I can come through the back end and give them what they need. I love what you just said there because this is exactly, I say it all the time, you guys, sell them what they want, give them what they need. Yeah. That is brilliant. Um, what? So when you're out, uh, 
I'm guessing, are you done tinkering, brother, or is it continuing? Always improvement? tinkering, continuing, continuing, <laughs> and continuing. Uh, we're we're take we're looking at what else can we do? You know, the the future is an infinite group of unknown unknowns. So I'm trying to create as many known unknowns as I can, and so we always have these ideas, and I'm just kind of looking into well, what can we do to brainstorm on that idea? and that idea and then kind of just see where it takes us. So if I'm listening right now and I'm, I'm a dentist office, I'm, you know, maybe it's another orthodontist. I don't know. You can tell me, but somebody's sitting here and they're like, I'm interested. I, you know what? I, I want to check this out. What is the benefit that they're going to have other than creating this incredible smile, which is fantastic. Straightening the teeth is also a part of that. But what are they, why would they do this, Elon? Why wouldn't they just stay, you know, because often people don't like change. That's literally why I wrote the third book, man. That's it. They you know, don't. They, they don't, don't like change. change. No. Nope. But we love to upgrade, brother. So yep. what is this upgrade that you're bringing to where they're going to see the benefit? What are they going to really see? They're going to see efficiency and they're going to see simplicity. Now, what does that mean? That means they'll be able to do more aligner cases and they'll be able to have more time to do what they love, right? And what does time, abundance of time create? Well, less stress, you know, and that's where your story resonated with me. It's like, when you can do more and delegate it and have it done, you know, better than some of the specialists in orthodontics, in our case, then think of how much time you created for yourself. You don't have to worry about these aligner cases. You don't have to worry about which orthodontist your patients are gonna go to because you can take care of them in your, your own team and you could uh, facilitate quality care with less of your time. If your goal is to make more money, well, you're gonna make more money out of it. So you're gonna have better quality care. You're gonna make more money. You're gonna spend less time doing it. And now you can just build more relationships with whoever you want, your, your friends, your family, go out, do whatever you want to do at that time. Just reduce that stress and just enjoy life. Why is it so much more efficient, brother? And the reason I ask is I watched my wife do Invisalign. It's an incredible product. I'll give them that. However, I would have failed miserably, in my opinion, because of how strict and stringent. I mean, she brushed her teeth after every time she, yeah. she would eat, she would do it. I mean, I just imagine myself, I would have been losing the darn things. It, that would be a challenge for me. Is there a difference in that? And again, I don't know the exact setup. I just watched her do it. I'm curious with yours because when we were talking off air, it seems to be that you, again, efficiency, which is fantastic for guys like me. And you said simplicity. I'm like, all right, these are two words I like. How can we do it so so it's faster, it's more efficient than the, the previous uh thing that was out there. Okay. So the key is I'll set it up in ways that none of the other companies have figured out yet. That's why I think perfect fit is, is where it is because we're setting things up in things that are missed when some other doctors do it. But the main thing, the main ingredient that every treating doctor needs to understand is JM, if you're going to do it man, you got to commit to it, you have to wear these. It's all on you. You got to wear them. And if they're not going to wear them, then you know what? Let them go get braces. And that's, that's why I say a lot of these orthodontists that have that fear, I say, don't worry, braces, braces are disappearing, right? Aligners will become more abundant uh, because, you know, Invisalign themselves, the number one aligner company says so. They say 70% of orthodontic cases will become clear aligner cases. That's a lot. So 30% will still be braces though. Right. And 30% might be people that want braces or they might just be people that won't commit to wearing the aligners. So that's still present, but that's the key, JM, wear that aligner. And if you can't wear it, then just go get braces. How long does a typical case take? And I know everybody's different, but I'm wondering if there's a, there's, I know nothing standard because everybody's built different. We have different mouths. We have different challenges. Do you have a baseline where you're like, we're putting somebody in and this is really our shot is or our hope is that they're out in, I don't know, a year, six months, two years. I don't know. What does Absolutely. that look like? Absolutely. So what I've done is I kind of, to simplify things, I put them into three tiers and, you know, and I, instead of putting a time limit, I call it, you know, there's the routine cases, then there's going to be the complicated cases. And then there's the simple cases, right? So the simple cases are usually going to take less than a year. 
The routine will go between a year to two. And then anything above two, I just call it complicated. And, and that's more like, you know, because everybody's different. Are you going to wear your aligners? Are all your teeth shaped the right way where they'll track better? Do you need to correct your bite too? What other things are involved? And just to simplify it, it's kind of like three levels, right? Three levels seems to keep it simple. Um, and, and that's kind of how we do it. And the other trick we've got is to help dentists understand how to properly finance these, which is totally different in orthodontics than it is in, in general dentistry. And once they grasp that concept, which we've really simplified, they really start to see things transform. I'm thinking of my 14 year old son right now, and I'm wondering, you know, he's pretty, he's pretty good with it. I mean, he's, he, he's definitely pretty, uh, not type a, but he's, he's, he's regimented, he's structured. He, he has discipline and he'll commit. Are you seeing kids as young as him doing these, uh, oh, with yeah. perfect fit? I'm seeing, uh, the youngest was eight and she rocked it. So she finished in less than six months. And for those that do expanders, she used this instead of an expander. So we were able to correct cross bites on both sides, open her airway, advance her front teeth to correct the cross bite in 22 weeks. And she did it with aligners. Now, this is where my, again, this is the naivety that comes through eight years old. Uh, she had all her adult teeth or you're doing oh, this no, with some baby teeth it, as well? Yeah, we did it with baby teeth as well. Wow. You know, because, hey, orthodontists work with baby teeth, too. And that's where it gets to, well, you know, my mentors taught me that there's no, you got to be outside the box. You got to get creative. And that's what I did. I, I've been able to do it in ways now where, you know, a lot of, I was taught here, pull teeth out. And I was like, well, I got ways where I can do orthodontics without pulling any teeth out. Literally. I mean, most orthodontists would say, go see a surgeon or do this. I said, like, no, I got you. I got you. I don't need a surgeon. And I'll probably be done in half the time. And that's because of my mentors and, you know, again, my creativity and tinkering and just trying what these three amazing orthodontists tell me. And I just put it together and I created like a, you know, a hodgepodge of my own solution with their, with their magic. You have a question or a topic here that I'm not even sure how to ask the question, but I'm curious on the answer and it's divergent strategy. I'm curious to see exactly what that means, how you've applied it, what, what that looks like in your world. So in my world, the diverging strategy is, you know, I think, like I said, the majority of us, about 80% of us kind of do the same thing. We're constantly in, uh, you know, what's called, I think I read about it. It's called the red ocean. The book was called the blue ocean strategy. And we're all here together, tinkering, fighting, thinking, oh, we have to compete within this limited landscape. And then I realized that's the scarcity mindset. And when we can switch out of it to a, an abundant mindset, we realize, you know what, there's unlimited opportunity. It's not limited. So it's not this group of patients, it's everything. So no more limits. That was the first set. There's an abundance. There's not a scarcity. Second thing was when I hit a goal, I don't need to shift to the next goal. I can say I've hit my goal and I'm going to let it ride. I don't need to say I need more of it. For example, I made this amount of money. I need more money or I've helped this many patients. I need to help more patients. You got to change that mindset and open yourself up to just say there's no limit. So I'm not going to step one. The next thing is, is that I don't have to come into any part of life saying I'm set on my ways. You know, I grew up this way. I can't go do what you did. I can't be the best at this because I am me. No, the mindset is I'm going to be the best that I can possibly be. And it's a, and just amazing thing happens when you have that and you put in the practice to get there. So diverging means I'm shifting outside of whatever the majority of others are doing to go out there and discover what could be just a bluer ocean. And great analogies are like Amazon, right? Who thought that that shopping would happen? Or Nike, you know, here he comes out. They create this shoe off a of waffle iron and you know, then they take a risk on this basketball player in North Carolina and look at what happened to them because they just put a little tinker in what the other companies were doing. So there's two words that I want to throw out and I'm curious. We'll, we'll start with abundance. Was there okay. a specific time moment? Was this how you grew up just knowing, look, man, the world's abundant. The universe will provide it's out there. Or was there 
like this self-development course, you read a book, you had this aha moment. What was it where you said, no more scarcity, I believe in abundance, which allows me to work. You don't even take it personally. Hey, if they're not going to do this, they're not going to commit, no problem, do the braces. You can hear it in the way you're speaking where it's, I don't need it. I don't have to have it because there's so much opportunity out there. Was that just, you grew up that way, brother? Oh, no, no. I put in the work. I put in a lot of work. Life life changes, and I was like the majority. I had my mind set on the comfort zone. And I, I, I learn now, and I believe that there's constant signs that we get, and our ego kind of keeps us in check. And it's not until we're able to tell our ego, I'm not going to listen to you anymore. I think, uh, I think I'm going to go with my gut on this one. I'm going to go with my soul and my spirit. I'm not going to listen to my mind and my heart. And when I started to realize that and I started to go back and realize all the choices that I made, I started to understand that I've been kind of locking myself up in this certain zone. And when I realized it, I was able to open myself up and say, that was my first thought. I'm not going to go with that thought. I'm going to think about it a little bit more and I'm going to go with that. Which, which I like to say is the opposite of my story, which is probably as true or more true than my original story, right? So when you get that type of a statement that the opposite of what I'm thinking is probably as true or more true than what I'm thinking, it just changed the world. It changed it because I realized, here's my thought, let's go do something totally different. Let's see where that takes us. And that's some of the stuff that I put into mind. And it took years and it took so many books, uh, sessions, therapists, coaches it's it's been just an amazing ride amazing yeah that was the when you say the work that's what i wanted to really dial into is you said books you said therapists you said i'm guessing some maybe it's personal development something because often that's where people get challenged or stuck is they're not seeking this out right yep. it's you sounds like you said look i want better i want better for not just orthodontics, but for my life and my, my health, my vitality, my mindset, all these things. And so you decided to do that. Was there that moment where you were the light bulb moment where you yes. figured that out? Yes. I call it, you know, there's always signs and then we don't pay attention to them. They'll get stronger and stronger. So I call it the sledgehammer to the head or the two by four. Yes. That, that came probably about now four years ago. And that's when, you know, my wife and I at the time, you know, we just started to part ways. And when that happened, it was just a huge shift. Now, now let me step back. Before that happened, I started to learn about things and I started to realize things. And it was kind of like, I'm, I can't control anyone but myself. And so I'm going to shift into where I, I know I want to be. And I hope that, you know, the two of us can do so and cross paths regularly and, you know, and it just didn't happen. I mean, I made the shift and we weren't crossing paths anymore. And I just came to the realization, I guess the two of us did, that it would be best to just go our separate ways. And as we did that, again, I started to learn more and more and more and learn all the mistakes that I've made in the past, live up to all the regrets, accept them, and then just create the ability to release them and just live in the moment, live in the present. Forget the past, live in the present, and un and understand that the future is still unknown. So don't dwell too much on that future. Just cherish the moment. And that is what's kind of transformed my entire life. So I love that because you're staying in the present moment, which is all that we're guaranteed anyway. So, and yet I'm immediately going to ask you a question about the future just because I'm yes. curious. Um, so we're in the present moment. You're, you're a year in, and things are going well. They're growing exponentially. If you were to look out, I don't know, a year, five years, whatever we want to look at, what do you see for perfect fit ortho? What do you see for the change? So many AI has just really started to really take hold. Mm -hmm. What does that look like, brother? If you were to have a crystal ball and say, this is kind of what I see this going. Do you do you go that far out? Or are you just truly, I'm in the moment and and we'll just take it day by day? So I'm in the moment and I'm going to take it day by day. And I like to say we, our future is the unknown unknown. And I can go back to what you said. The past is the past. We are not in that analog era anymore. We are digital. Um, and my learning has really helped me understand. So I'm going to go back to a book that I just recently read called range 
by David Epstein. And one thing he talked about was that um, that deep blue IBM system, I believe it was, that defeated the chess champion, uh, Kasparov. And so the interesting thing was, is now we know AI has can store far more data and produce the results far quicker than any human. However, uh, Deep Blue was starting to lose. And the way it lost was it lost to a team, a team that was AI and people. And they, and he labeled that team a centaur team. So what he, what he kind of put in my mind in this moment is the future is AI, but in this moment, it can't just be AI alone. It's AI with a team, a team of people. And now instead of just AI, instead of just the doctor, if you would, it's the two of us working together to create the unknown and the unknown that we create is absolutely beautiful. What does that look like for you on a daily basis? Because often... I'll, I'll just use some of the dental practices sure. I've, I've been to when I bring up even let's just say chat GPT, they don't even a, a lot of them, not all of them, a lot of them aren't even really utilizing that. So I realize they're using AI for some of the uh, di diagnostics and some of the plans, but I'm like, man, there's so much available to to reduce time. My question is for you. What does that look like on a daily basis? How much AI are you using? What does that look like? Because you're obviously prompting it, giving it things. You're working together with AI. How much of your workflow is is utilizing that? All right. So that's, that's that question has a couple of things. So as far as monitoring the patient's cooperation with with the aligners, because like you said, you got to wear those aligners for them to work. That's done a hundred percent with AI. Um, there's a company that we've tested. It's called Dental Monitoring. I think it's been the best as far as monitoring the fit of aligners go. So that's what we use, and it weekly monitors the tracking or the fit of the aligners. Okay. Now let's go to the setup of the case. The case is set up through various aligner companies. Because remember, I'm open ended on that. We'll use any aligner company that you feel comfortable with. Um, that is something that each company does a little different. So that's where I come in and my team come in and we say, we understand what the doctor wanted because they wrote a prescription and told us specifically what they want to create. We're going to make sure that that gets created. So that's where we come in and we tell the other companies, hey, take your AI and we need to make these adjustments. That's where our work comes in. Once we're happy with everything, we just send it back to the doctor and the doctor approves the case. So we've, we're the one that kind of fills in with a little bit of AI and a little bit of, of our experience and our mindset and our, you know, our abundant strategy to make sure the doctor gets what they want. And so what the doctor sees is I submitted this case, they've returned it back to me and it, whatever they did, the results are going to get what I want. And that's what we try to make happen from our experience. There's going to be things that you see that you're like, oh my God, that doesn't look right. And my answer to those clients is it doesn't look right on the digital model but it's going to look right in the mouth. And that's why you came to perfect fit. So because I've never done this, sure. if they are doing it, cause is this a weekly, I think you said, or how often do they check in? So AI can see, is it, is it connected to the liners? What does that look like to where they're like, yep, nope. Is it a phone? Do they have to go to the office? What is the check-in process? Awesome. So it's through a phone. So with the, when they go to that, they're, their primary care dentist initially to pick everything up. They'll get the aligners, they'll get their scan boxes, and they'll be linked to their app. From there on, they'll take their uh, phones with that app and they'll and the scan box, and they'll scan whatever day they want, whatever time they want, and we like it to be once a week. We'll evaluate things. First, AI does. And if AI sees everything is smooth, it'll instantly send a text to the patient, go ahead and change, you're ready for the next aligner. If it notices something that's not perfect, it alerts us, we take a look, and then we tell the uh, app, yes, let them go on, or no, hold on to that tray for a little bit more, or let's talk to your dentist and make sure they understand what's going on because you might need to go see them. So ideally, you know, and that's where the, this is where the abundance comes in and the efficiency comes in for the primary dentist. They might not need to see the patient in the office until they're done with their aligners because our team sees them regularly. So that's where now I've passed on that here's what you can create for your patients, convenience. We can extend the affordability. And guess what? Your chair time will clear exponentially because now instead of seeing these patients every six weeks, 
you might only see them twice in all of their treatment. Wow. So you're truly partnering up. When we say collaboration, when they choose Perfect Fit Ortho, you're saying, look, let us take a lot of this workload off of you. We have the app. We'll check in. We will literally, obviously with your approval, but you don't have to be doing so much of the the heavy lifting. Did I hear that all correctly? Because again, not being in that world, that sounds pretty damn good, man. I don't know why that's, I wouldn't do that. That's the, that's the question I ask. And the way I like to say is we've become your virtual orthodontist. We're your virtual orthodontist. You're still the treating doctor, but we're the virtual orthodontist. So it's just a whole shift in how these primary care doctors can deliver aligner care in their office with a virtual orthodontist. Instead of Amazing. by themselves taking a course, hiring an orthodontist, aligner cases can be done at an extremely high level with a virtual orthodontist from Perfect Fit. Are you going, uh, and maybe you already are, are you in just the U.S.? Have you expanded into other countries? What does that look like? Yes, we, we've expanded to other countries. We've got offices in Canada, Puerto Rico, and we are in talks uh, in London, in the UK. Um, and I'm actually in some talks with some labs in Asia and Germany and even Israel. So there's a lot of things we're working on. Um, I'm excited because of the unknown unknowns, but the amount of lives we can just change and give wow smiles to is, is literally going to be a dream come true. I mean, now I can, you know, know that the best smile can be had, that I can share what I was taught from my mentors to everyone in the world and do it with clear aligners. Yeah, you mentioned that word several times, and, and it's one that I'm a big fan of, which is mentors. Clearly, your mentors have meant a ton to you. Was Did it happen by just you got lucky to fall into these amazing mentors? Did you seek them out? How did you have that relationship and what did you get from it along the way? Because I too am very blessed and grateful for the amazing mentors I had, but often I've found that people don't seek them out anymore. It's like, no, I'll figure it out on my own. I'm like, why? Let's utilize some of these amazing mentors. What have they meant to you, brother? Well, first of all, luck was huge. Luck was huge. Um, learning that sometimes you do have to put an effort to connect with these mentors that played a role in it as well for some, but I think the primary thing was just luck. And then of course, my, my understanding that I have an opportunity, a very fortunate one. Let's not, let's lose it. Let's not just let it slip away. And then I learned, and actually I kind of have this my whole life. I was pretty good at listening. I didn't have to argue. Um, and now I learned, you know, when you think you're right and you're ready to argue, that's when you definitely want to make sure you keep your mouth shut. Cause if you're willing to argue about something, you probably don't know as much as you think. And the best analogy, and I, and I share this with my son, my middle son daily, I was like, if I tell you two plus two equals five, are you going to argue with me? And he's like, no, I was like, why aren't you going to argue? He's like, cause I know you're wrong. I was like, it, great. So that's what I'm trying to tell you when you know the answer you don't argue. So if you're going to argue with somebody, I just want you to pause and say, maybe I don't know as much as I think I do. Cause if I did know, I wouldn't argue and changing that mindset to that. Oh, it just opened up so much learning. Cause now instead of thinking of an ex- a reason to come combat what they just said, I just listen to it, write it down, say why I disagree with it and say, well, how, how are they right? And how could I be wrong? And that just teaches me so much more. It's amazing. Mm. The humility in that statement alone is remarkable. One of the things I've found specific to, well, any industry for this matter, the folks that don't have this, if they don't have humility, they truly find their egos getting in the way. It stunts growth, man. Oh, man. I'm curious, if did you ever battle with that ego or have you always kind of had this, again, you have a growth mindset, clearly, but the ability to say, you know what? I don't know it all. And I, even though we have an amazing product now, we can, we can definitely make it better. There's such humility in your speak. 
did that come to you naturally or was this a learned thing over the years? I think I learned it over the years. I think I'd always been a listener. I'd always been a pretty good listener. Um, stay quiet, just listen. But it wasn't until recently where I said, you know what? Everything I hear is really an ally. There's no enemies. It's just they're sharing stuff with me. And I can learn from anything, no matter how negative I want to interpret it. It's not, it's an opportunity to learn. And when I was able to realize that there was just, you know, life was just full of learning moments. And when I learned to look around me instead of just in front of me um, and just appreciate the beauty that's there, it's just changed everything. It changed everything. Absolutely beautiful, man. I'm curious that this is more of a personal question, just because I, I see so many people or kids nowadays having braces has it has it gone up or liners and braces sorry just orthodontics in general has it increased recently and if it has is there a reason for it i mean i read an interesting book breath by james nestor which talked about how we don't breathe properly so yeah. our mouths are literally they're closing in they're they're, they're yeah. getting smaller and smaller is that what's happening or Help me you know out. what? I wish, I wish, because, you know, our, I think there's so much going on with our airway because that's a great book. It's a great book. Um, it's the foods we eat, the foods that are processed, our chewing, so many things are affecting that airway. Um, but orthodontics alone, I think it could be because of that. But I, you know what? I think the honest reason is, is people just want straight teeth. It's almost like, you know, we go through eras of uh, plastic surgery uh, Botox for cosmetics instead of what it was created for, which was muscle pain. You know, it's almost like is orthodontics the first cosmetic procedure we're going to get in life? And I'd say that could be as true as we're just getting it because of the airway. Because my concern is, as I look at certain cases, if it's about airway, why are teeth still getting pulled out? Hmm. You know, they shouldn't be because we're constricting the airway with that. Um, why are so many things, you know, instead of going to the root cause of a lot of our airway issues. We're just, you know, getting tossed medicine. Well, shouldn't we find the root cause of that? And so that that's just a whole nother story that, again, that I was introduced to um, that took me in this direction. Yeah. For those not familiar with the book, it, James Nestor is a I, is an incredibly well-written book, I, in my opinion. Yep. And it really basically says how we don't know how to breathe properly. Yep. The so simple true. thing is, is that we're mouth breathers when in fact we should be breathing more through our nose. Was there anything else that you really grabbed from that book where you're like, holy shit, man, like we have you know missed what? the boat here. I didn't even get to read that book yet. That's just on my book list, but I I've heard stories from it and I've studied other books that are similar, but yes, they got their information from that book. So that book list I told you about, it's a long list. So <laughs> I get to go through about one every two months, but it breathe is definitely up on there. Definitely. All right. So I have to ask you then, yeah. if you're getting through one every, what did you say? One every two About months. About two months. Brother, are you not doing audio book yet? Because I was, I was strict. I was going to always have a physical book. I mean, shoot, I've written three. I, like I was kind of the traditionalist. Are you not doing audio book at this point? I'm doing audio book. But so another great life changing was Outlived and, and Outlived is a great book about health. And so yeah. That shifted my mindset too. And I'm thinking like, okay, I have to redo my whole schedule. You know, it's going to involve meditation. It's going to involve nutrition. It's going to involve exercise. It's going to involve sleep. How many hours do I have left and what can we do with that? So yes, my books are on audio. Um, they're usually there while I'm just outside getting some sun or driving in peace and quiet and calmness. So I'd say I get 30 minutes to an hour, four days a week. Um, because when I have the kids, it's their time, man. I don't want to do any work. I don't want to mess around with anything. I just want to give them my full attention. So I have about four days a week, an hour, that's four hours a week. That, that's really not enough time. But at this moment, that's what I'm going to commit. Hey, man, you're, 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 you're clearly a growth mindset. Outlive is a fantastic book as well. Like you said, hey, there's another book, Why We Sleep by oh, yeah. Matthew Walker. If you haven't had a chance, you guys changed my life because i was a yeah i'll sleep four hours a night i was that guy he's like dude you're doing irreplay irreparable damage you can't change it you need a minimum of six minimum and he minimum. really wants you to have seven or eight so yeah, eight it was the number 
it's I don't hit eight. I'm not quite there yet, but I'm working on it, Elon. I am. Oh, it's hard. I tell people bedtime. I gotta go to bed. Like, but but I'm like, no buts. Gotta go to bed. And yes, I'm waking up at five a.m. because I got to work out tomorrow. So sorry, gotta go. Love it, love it. What didn't I know enough to ask you that you want to make sure to get over to the audience? Because again, you're an interesting guy. You're doing some cool stuff. I know I missed something along the way. What do you want to make sure to share with the audience as we start to wrap up? The one thing I just want to add, and the only thing I think we did not touch on is another great book to read is drive. And through Mm. drive, you'll realize there's three pillars, right? There's your purpose, there's the autonomy, and then there's your mastery. Okay. So it's really hard for you to do all of it. See, we all need to kind of get a team together. And if you want to, you know, just in the aligner landscape, if you want to create abundance and relationship with your patients where they'll, where you can create like optimum clear aligner results, the pillars that you have is the purpose. And if the purpose is to give them the best, we were able to create the autonomy and I spared you that time of mastery. I've got the mastery. My team's created the autonomy. It's your purpose. You've now set the stage for the best service you can possibly give your community and your patients. Love it, man. You're giving them time back. He's talking about Drive by Daniel Pink, by the way. It's a fantastic book. One of my favorite concepts. I talk about it on stage often. Result-only work environment. And ultimately, that's what I just heard. Look, we can do it better. Who cares if this is the way you've done it for years? Who cares if you did 50 hours a week? Daniel Pink will tell you, no, we care about the results. And what you're really talking about, Elon, is giving people their time back, their freedom back, allowing them to prosper, be abundant in less time, I think is beautiful, brother. That's it. You summed it up awesome, JM. I appreciate that. If somebody's listening, they're like, well, I want to partner up. I want Perfect Fit Ortho, I, whether they're a consumer, whether they're uh, a dentist, orthodontist, whoever it might be, where's the best place for them to connect with you online? Go online to perfectfitortho.com. You can go breathe through. It's pretty pretty specific and schedule a complimentary consult. We'll have a great time. We'll talk. We'll answer your questions. We can show you how it works. We'll do basically do whatever you feel you need. Um, you can learn about our service. We're not here to create, you know, to force you into membership. It's a case by case thing. Try it. If you don't like it, you don't, you're not, you're not locked in for anything. If you love it, it's a case by case. Eventually you'll think maybe you can do some and you'll just use us for others. That's fine. I'm not, you know, we're not here to tell you what to do. We're just here to get, help you get the best out to your community. And that's it. Awesome. Well, go check it out at Perfect Fit Ortho, you guys. He's a good dude. He's changing the way this is working. I think it's fantastic. Thank you for coming on, Elon, sharing what you've been doing. Keep tinkering, my brother. Let's keep making an upgrade, and I love it. Thank you, sir. I appreciate the time, and I hope we can still cross paths and stay in touch. I, I feel that bond, man. I love it. There's no doubt about it. You guys, go back, check this out. I mean, we're talking abundance. We're talking growth mindset. We're talking about changing the landscape of an entire industry. It's pretty good stuff. Make sure to share this with someone you know, love, care about, because look, like I said, all my kids have had their, their braces on. And if there's a better way, a more efficient way and using their phone, oh my gosh, it's always available. Let's go do it. Make sure to share it with someone you love until next time. Remember your mindset matters. I appreciate y'all.